The issue of patient safety is a particularly relevant concern today. From my point of view, it receives far too little attention. Kind of like an iceberg phenomenon a bit. We're only aware of the small part we see, which means we're not aware of the real big problems that are there. Unfortunately, people only hear about dramatic cases that are covered by the press, but the fact is that the majority of preventable incidents don't come to light, so the problems don't appear to be as urgent as they really are. Epidemiological figures regarding this are difficult. There is not much reliable, solid data on this subject. To date, the most important study was probably published in the USA in the year 2000. In this study, they found that based on data extrapolated from error rates in two hospitals, up to 98,000 patients die annually from avoidable errors in the USA. This figure has shaken us all up. Now one could say that these figures from the year 2000 are already quite old. But in the course of time they have been confirmed by studies from countries like Sweden or the Netherlands. The perioperative environment is a very complex working environment. Here we work with technology, as well as working in teams, such as surgeons with anaesthetists and the nursing staff. It's a very dynamic working environment that involves quite a bit of risk and challenges along the way, such as using that technology and working in a team. Correspondingly, the operating room has a high rate of complications, or risk of complications. Anesthesia, therefore, plays a crucial role, because not only does it ensure that the operation is performed safely, but it can potentially be the basis for problems in the post-operative area through mismanagement. Anesthetists have always dealt with the topic of patient safety, or safety in general. And as a result, the list of topics we deal with in the operating room is actually quite long. Be it teamwork, simulations, implementations, and the correct use of checklists. We as anaesthetists can set the example by making this our primary goal to positively influence safety culture in the OR. There are, however, also topics of a more technical nature such as the avoidance of infections through correct antibiotic prophylaxis, hand hygiene rules, and the prevention of hypothermia, but also airway management in order not to produce complications, lung protective ventilation, and the rational use of blood products are examples. Post-operative pulmonary complications are rarely attributed to the use of anesthesia. It is interesting to note, however, that lung protective ventilation is of great importance, not only in the intensive care unit, but also in the operating room. With respect to this point, we should actually take this topic much more seriously. In the Las Vegas study, for example, there are indications that lung protective ventilation is not carried out as frequently as it is actually necessary. Another aspect, for example, is the use of muscle relaxants. Today, relaxation is a standard procedure during general anesthesia, and many are not fully aware of the fact that a surplus of muscle relaxants can definitely be responsible for post-operative pulmonary complications. So-called silent regurgitations can actually lead to pneumonia in the post-operative phase, which can then be attributed to the wrong use of muscle relaxants. Technology is a very fascinating keyword. On the one hand, we want and need reliable technology. But on the other hand, technology itself shouldn't tempt us to believe that every situation can be mastered by simply using technology. We have to make sure that anaesthetists working in the operating room remain competent. 
I need to have technology I can rely on, but I also need the users of that technology to be able to manage extraordinary situations and not just rely on the technology alone. The fundamental problem that we actually have with regard to patient safety is that we don't really see it for what it is. And this is probably in part due to how we define patient safety or safety in general. In fact, we often say that when there are no errors made, all is safe. The point is that when we think like this, we'll always react to the error only. That means that we only invest in safety if an error has occurred, thus trying to avoid this one error. We have to change our way of thinking by saying that we want to invest proactively in safety initiatives. This would mean that we need to invest in the broad availability of simulation trainings, or that we integrate the topic of patient safety in the curriculum of medical universities or in specialized medical training. And here politics, especially health politics, needs to play a major role.